What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Boy back in another video. Today, we're going to talk about how to beat Dark World. This is a really annoying deck that somehow popped up in the format, and it's essentially more or less a solitaire deck that allows the Dark World player to draw their entire deck or as many cards as they can until they can assemble all the pieces to hand loop you for between four to five cards using the Silva Warlord of Dark World. And essentially, they do a lot of bouncing around. They're, none of their monsters are really once per turn, like at least the ones that matter. Um, there are very few cards that are actually hard once per turn. So if you have like the new Rainbow over King of the Dark World in the graveyard, as well as the Graffa Dragon Lord of Dark World in your graveyard, you can keep bouncing back your Dark World monsters, essentially getting a free plus two every time that you have both of these creatures in the graveyard and a Dark World monster in your hand or on your field. So how you beat this deck is, well, it's basically more or less an FTK deck, I would say, not in the sense of the traditional sense where they reduce your life once to zero, but if they're able to loop your hand for four or five cards and then also put up some powerful Omni Negates like Graffa Dragon Overlord of Dark World, potentially a number 38 to negate spell cards, and then even sometimes an Appaloosa to negate monster effects, more or less the duel is over if you progress to that point. Essentially, anytime this deck is starting to play, if they're already playing for like more than two or three minutes and they're drawing and turboing and they have so much gas, they're probably going to be able to loop you like nine times out of ten and also put up these negates. So if you're playing against this deck and you see that they're already like super comboing, I would probably just scoop up my cards and not waste time. But you have to recognize when they're actually gassing off their combos and when they're actually digging and hoping for um, a combo piece. Because sometimes this deck does whiff. The major thing that this deck loses is to itself, either by bricking or when you snipe a danger from their hand. So essentially they're going neg one. So how you would beat this card essentially, well... If you play hand traps, I guess we can start off with the hand trap that's generic in everyone's deck, and that's Ash Blossom and Joy's Spring. You should never Ash Blossom a danger, first and foremost, because the reveal effect in the hand is not once per turn. So if you Ash Blossom, they can just reveal it again. So you essentially wasted an Ash Blossom. Um, just a fair warning there. The things that you should Ash are anything that allows your opponent to get a plus one. So if they're playing like trade in, I would Ash that. However, if they go like Allure of Darkness, I probably would not Ash that because it's not a plus one, right? They're drawing two cards, but then they're banishing cards. So it's still like the same number of card advantages that they have. The way you beat this deck is you have to force them to take negs. So then the inconsistency of their deck catches up to them. If they have four cards in hand and they're using dangers, the chances of them whiffing on the danger is 25% as opposed to the 20% if they have five cards in hand, right? So we always want to have them eat the neg. And half the time when you do ash something like a trade-in, you probably just win on the spot because they actually lost two cards, right? So they're down to three cards in hand and they have to somehow build a combo with that and get their gas online, which is really, really hard. The other thing I would love to ash is Genta, Gateman of Dark World. Even though this is not really a plus one, this is like the main starter in their deck. What it does is they can discard it as a cost to add the Gates of Dark World from their deck to their hand, and then when it's banished, they can special summon it back if they control a Dark World card. So they would add Dark World Gates and then activate it, Banish the Genta from the graveyard and then discard a Dark World name and then draw a card. And then Genta would come back by its own effect because Gates of Dark World is a Dark World card that's on the field. So we don't want them to do that. And a lot of the times when you do Ash this, if they don't have any other like starters, then it's very, very hard for them to play. Even if they have dangers, they sort of have to bank on the danger not whiffing in the 25% chance because they have four cards left in hand. And they also have to be able to start drawing another combo pieces, start being able to go potentially into things like the Garrus to continue to dig. So I would always, always Ash the Genta if that's your first action. The other thing that you might want to Ash is the Garrus itself when they do use the effect to draw two cards and discard a card. Because again, they're going plus one. They're also triggering an effect by the discard because they discard off of a card effect and not a cost. So if they're going to the Garrus, a lot of times they are trying to uh, continue their combo. And if you stop this, this can be a really critical choke point. As well as Sir Yuja as well. That's another card that sometimes they have to go in desperation in order to just draw cards and fix their hand so they can continue to combo. So any Anything that allows them to draw cards in multiples or um, if it's a Genta, I would definitely Ash that. Everything except Allure because I don't think Ashing Allure is very good. Unless, of course, they have like two cards in hand, one of them being Allure, and you know that they need that draw, right? So that's where I would Ash. Moving on, let's 
talk about some other hand traps that are in the format. Drone Lockford, this is something that I would obviously, you, you would want to fire off after their first draw. So if they do something like a Danger or a Ganta, you would fire it off immediately in game one. In game two and three, they like to side in Cyframe Gamma to hit things like Shifter, Drone Lockbird, cards that essentially stifle them and, you know, skip their turn, which they don't want. So I would always play around Cyframe Gear Gamma in game two and game three. So if you have Drone Lockbird, I would definitely wait until they get a monster on the board before firing it off if you can, if you can afford to do that. Sometimes it might backfire, but I mean, again, it depends on your hand. If you have other resources, I just find that if you play in a gamma you lose the game but if you have droll even if they're able to get a couple of ads at some point you're going to draw them and it's still going to hurt them it's still going to end their turn so i would rather draw when they use a danger effect summon that body on board draw card and then their gamma's dead if they have it in hand to draw as opposed to drawing on the genta or an allure and then getting punished by a gamma right so that's uh, something to think about when you do have drone lockbird and the other thing is Speaking of turn skip hand traps, D shifter. So if you're playing a deck like Cash Terror where you have D shifter, you definitely want to play around Gamma Game 2 and Game 3 as well because shifter is such a high impact card. So let's wait for them to put a body on board and then shifter so they don't really see it coming. And a lot of times they might not expect it, especially because they've already committed some resources into their graveyard. They've already used Genta. They think they're able to play and then they put a body on board and they're kind of hit off guard by the D shifter. And they're also committing resources onto the table for you to dispose of on the following turn. So that's that's always good because if they are able to pass their turn again with something like a skill drain which they might side then they're still able to play if they had that monster in their hand when you shift her preemptively as opposed to you shift during after they have the monster on board so they committed like a name on board you can destroy it by battle even if they do have skill drain and the next turn they're down one or two cards as um, opposed to having that card in the hand and then on top of all that we're still trying to play around gamma right so let's wait for the body to shift her moving on is Valor and I guess Valor, Imperm, and Ghost Mourner. These cards you definitely want to save for their choke points, so things from the extra deck generally, because none of their monsters really have monster effects, unless you're playing something like Tour Guide, which they probably shouldn't be playing because it's just not very consistent with the deck. So the minute they make something like a Dugaris or like a Saryuja, you definitely want to use these hand traps on the Dugaris to negate because they're trying to draw, they're trying to discard and go infinite pluses. So definitely wait for Dugaris if you can. And then the other thing to wait is also for Saryuja if you're able to do that. A lot of times this, these hand traps don't, like they're not strong enough if your opponent opens very, very optimally because they might not even need the Dugaris or the Saryuja in order to combo. But again, it's just, that's the type of deck that it is. It's a very glass cannon deck it's a solitaire deck and they really have to have everything go right for them in order for it to work so sometimes just one imperm or a valor can be very very powerful in turn ending if it's timed correctly if you're siding sideframe gear gamma this is another cool thing i would generally you you really have to consider like what they have so if they're starting off with a danger with five in hand i probably wouldn't recommend gambling that unless you have another hand trap because they still have a high chance of being able to play so i would use gamma similar to how you would use valor and imperm and ghost mourner just wait for them to summon like a dugaris wait for them to summon like a saryuja something that you can recognize as a choke point that you really need to resolve before gambling but if they are using genta i would definitely probably gamma that so they cannot add the gates to the hand and start off their combo so you i would say gent is probably the most high impact card as a starter in that dark world deck so being able to stop that is at the first chance that you can is very very crucial in my personal opinion after playing the deck the other card that's also very good to side against them is artifact lancia believe it or not because Gates of Dark World has to banish a card from their graveyard in order to discard, and that's a huge component of their deck. It's a starter off of Genta. It's also a extender because they're continuing looping the gates. It's not once per turn, so they can activate up to three or even four copies if they do use Nightmare Unicorn to shuffle one back to continue to draw and play. So you're shutting off a main portion of their deck. Your start, their starter, you're shutting it off, and you're also shutting off their extension. So they really have to rely on things like dangers in order to play, and then also like start going into their plays. It's really hard for them to discard. They're also not able to use the ascension, the accession. <laughs> I just don't know how to pronounce this, but Dark World of Session is another card that they're not able to use unless they discard a Graffa and another, like a dark monster from their, their hand. So they can't banish from the graveyard using its effect, which is very, very powerful as well.
So Lancia is really, really good. If you guys are already siding this against Kashira, then definitely side it against Dark World as well. And with Lancia, you can actually probably hold it against this deck because they don't play things like Pot of Prosperity or any pots. So you can probably hold it until they activate gates and then that way you punish them because they've committed gates to the table so you can wipe it out next turn uh, with your monster engine with whatever removal that you have. The other thing to note is if you're going second, you should definitely be siding in spell and trap removal. So something like Cosmic Cyclone, maybe Twin Twisters, Harpy's Feather Duster. These are cards that should definitely go in because of the fact that they do side skill drain. So a lot of decks are weak against skill drain. And it's also a good way for them to fight back against things like these Shifter and Drone Lockbird that would skip their turn because they can essentially equalize that by setting a skill drain and then flipping it so you can't play either. And then you pass back their turn to them and then they can play again because Drone Lockbird and Shifter are no longer active. So they're probably always gonna side in something like that and you can preemptively use these cards to take care of them, to deal with them so you can continue to play. The other card that I see a lot of Dark World players also siding is Eradicator Epidemic Virus. So something like a Cosmic Cyclone might be actually kind of handy here. If they do flip Eradicator on your draw phase, you can chain the Cosmic Cyclone to deal with the gates of the Dark World that's already on the table or the spell or trap that they have set, which could be a skill drain, right? So you're able to still play even if you get Eradicated. So that makes it a little bit better than Harpy's Feather Duster, in my opinion, on top of the fact that you can set Cosmic and then use it on their turn in response to Gates of the Dark World to banish that so they cannot draw either. And it's also very good going first. It's a pseudo interruption because you're dealing with the Gates of the Dark World as well. So that's about all I had for beating the Dark World deck. If you guys have any other suggestions, definitely let me know below uh, in the comments. I know board breakers are also very good against this too. So if you guys are siding board breakers, definitely side them in going second as well because they're still sometimes able to put up negations onto the board. So yeah, with that, um, I'll leave you guys to it. If you haven't subscribed, like, comment already, please do so below and let me know in the comments what you guys think about strategies to beat this very, very annoying FTK deck. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.